Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. Today's date is May 15, 2021. And in this video, I'm going to discuss some things I have planned coming up on the channel in the next few weeks. This is, of course, on top of current events videos, which by their nature are spontaneous and unplanned. The way those work is, you know, sometimes I'll just be thinking about things for months, maybe years in some cases, and then a current event will happen that just really grabs me and I'll say, oh, I should make a video on that because I feel that this is, you know, important to some train of thought that I've been on or whatever. Uh, but yeah, so these are the texts. I'm going to come back to the current events thing in a minute because I had a COVID thing planned, COVID video, not like a COVID incident in my life. Uh, I had a COVID video planned for today. I don't know what happened, but it's not going to happen. I'll tell you about that in a minute. So coming up on the channel, Origin of the Family, Private Property in the State by Engels. That was referenced several times in the state and revolution. It's also just kind of a major work by Engels, and I feel like putting it up on the channel would be a good thing to do. Another long text, The Proletarian Revolution and the Renegade Kautsky by Lenin. Uh, that's the next text after the state and revolution in the basic Marxist-Leninist study guide that we've been working through. I'm trying to do at least one, but hopefully two, of the works from that syllabus every month on the channel. It's just hard. Both of these texts, Origin of the Family and Proletarian Revolution, are long. So as in the case of State and Revolution, the end audio file, the finished product, came out to like five hours. Um, you know, I can only devote maybe one or two hours a day to this, four or five days a week at most. Uh, and, you know, that basically takes up an entire week. So it's hard for me to work in the long texts. I like to just sit down, get something done within a couple of hours, get the video printed and then upload it. Um, it is worth it doing the long texts, but I also like to have frequent uploads and it just kind of gums up the works a little bit when I'm doing those. So I can only do a few per month uh, in the interest of getting you know more content out there and keeping things rolling along. So along those lines, I have a few series. Uh, some are in progress, some are planned. So there's the fascism series. I've already done a few texts by Clara Zetkin and Bordiga. Uh, we're going to add more texts by Zetkin and Bordiga, as well as Gramsci and others on the subject of fascism. It's an important topic to understand. I also came across a great collection on cooperatives from a socialist perspective, and there's probably like 10 or 12 articles in that collection. I plan on doing the entire thing. I think that this is uh, an important topic to cover and one that people are just interested in knowing about. Now, dovetailing with that, I also am planning a little mini series, I guess you could say, not a full series, on Richard Wolff. So... I recently did a long commentary on the Destiny versus Richard Wolff quote-unquote debate. Uh, total mismatch, one of the most depressing videos I've ever watched. But um, I came out of that uh, with a lot of the same questions and concerns about Richard Wolff's work. I mean, I overwhelmingly agree with him on a lot of things. But I also think uh, we need leadership in this time. The socialist movement needs leadership. And he just always dodges specifics in a way that f honestly just pisses me off. So I'm <laughs> um, going to try to light a fire there a little bit with this series. Basically, the contents of that series, uh, I went to Richard Wolff's site and I found he had a couple of reading lists. One was a general Marxism reading list. I found some of the recommendations to be good, in my opinion, and some of them to be like incredibly random where I'm not really sure why they're on the list. But I thought that maybe discussing it as a channel, you know, with you in the audience giving your feedback, maybe we can get some insight into this. Uh, also, Wolf had a specific reading list on Titoism, Yugoslavia and its sort of cooperative centered model of socialism. Um, we're going to read an article from that, as well as a reading from Tito himself that was suggested by Wolf. And I'm also going to throw in some criticism of Tito in that series. We're going to do some commentary on the Hakim interview of Richard Wolf, and um, also read a Richard Wolf article on co-ops. So 
we'll try to dig into that and um, just see what's going on there. Because to me, particularly out of that Destiny thing, Richard Wolf does a lot of media, so it's hard to pin him down to just one thing. He really does a lot of media. Um, but, you know, there was an example where he was really put on the line, as in the Hakeem interview, to say, hey, what do you think about this? And I just found him wriggling away from a lot of specifics at a time where it seems to me like maybe wriggling away from specifics is not, it's no longer beneficial. We're no longer talking about ideas. We are talking about the impending collapse of capitalism. Not that it's going to cease to exist, but that it's going to cease to function in a way that, uh, you know, any working person is going to be at all able to deal with. I think it's really time to move beyond ideas and specifics. We've also built the left uh, a little more substantially now versus five or 10 years ago. So it may be time. That's where I'm coming from. You know, and when I do critiques in general, whether it's Richard Wolff, uh, who I mostly agree with on a lot of things, uh, perhaps, well, we'll see, you know, when it comes time to implement uh, whether we have disagreements or not. But, you know, whether it's him or Jimmy Dore or Kyle Kalinske or anyone else in the social Democrat crowd, not trying to put Wolf in that crowd, but, you know, people who are not avowed Marxists. Um, the idea here is to keep the discussion flowing to useful places that increase intelligence. And, you know, Kyle Kalinske, for example, the guy has almost a million subscribers. That's a huge audience, probably a good chunk of whom are ready for something more. So... For a Marxist putting out a criticism, that tells all the audience who is ready for something better, and believe me, it exists, than Kyle Kalinske, uh, but isn't sure where to go, you know, this is a tip off to them. So I'm just tired of people freaking out in the comments when I do a critique. Anyone who has confidence in their work, who is running a channel, really shouldn't mind a critique. Um, anybody who goes to school for creative writing or art or music, uh, you face critiques on your work. It's part of how you learn and grow. So um, just keep that shit out of my comments. I had a falling out with a patron recently over that, and it was just like, fuck off. I'm really not interested. You can keep your five bucks, mister. So anyway, uh, that's the Richard Wolf series. Moving on, uh, we're going to do some more text from Marlena Dixon. I just really like uh, her texts and got another half dozen to do. More from The Governance of China by Xi Jinping. Uh, I was trying to do a chapter or two a month. I think I didn't do any last month. I'm going to pick that back up again. We're just trying to understand some of what is going into um, the governance of modern China. We're going to do the monthly dose of Posadas, as usual, doing about two texts from Posadas per month. Why am I a Posadist? No, but... There is public interest in the topic, uh, at least for the curiosity factor. And, you know, here at Socialism for All, we don't just do texts that we 100% agree with. That's unhealthy. Um, you got to understand what else is out there. Otherwise, you're operating blind. You know, I posted one text from Bordiga. Somebody goes, I guess you've gone left com. No. <laughs> like... I don't, I don't know what to say. Do you literally just only read things that you 100% agree with? If so, how do you function in society? What we're trying to do is learn all of the different currents that have gone into socialism. So please, just stop with the knee-jerk stuff. It's really fatiguing, honestly. Um, I just, uh, I don't know what to tell you. You know, you're, you're not really going to know a lot of the stuff until you actually confront it firsthand. And yeah, there's a point. After you read three or four things from somebody, it's like listening to music or, or, you know, watching movies from a particular director or writer or, you know, actor, actress. Um, you get to know their work. And, you know, after you've seen a bunch, OK, you have a sense of it now. You can move on with the ability to comment from your own original point of view on that. You don't have to rely on consensus anymore. Uh, somebody else commented, Bordiga had some bad takes, though. Yeah, no shit. We all have bad takes. Bordick uh, had some particularly bad takes, one of which we're about to cover as the next text. So um, anyway, I just find it uh, so just draining when people go with this knee-jerk stuff. We're trying to learn here. We're trying to learn. Not just stroke our own egos. You, you don't really 
gain intelligence that way. Okay, and then of course there will be various other texts. I have a bunch of things in the hopper that uh, I'm not ready to commit to yet. I have a few series that I'm considering, you know, launching, but we'll start with this and we'll see what else gets thrown in. Like I said, also current events are spontaneous just by their very nature. So that said, putting aside the coming soon menu, uh, I do want to comment just briefly in this video on the COVID follow-up that I had planned for today, but my files miraculously disappeared. Maybe it's for the best, I don't know. Uh, but in any case, uh, I'm not redoing the screenshots. So off the top of my head, um, following the CDCs, I just, it's, I get speechless every time I want to comment on this. I think about it. It's just, it blows my mind. Seriously, I'm dumbfounded. Um, so the CDC issued, in my opinion, suicidal directives on halting mask wearing and social distancing for anyone who is vaccinated. And it's on the honor system. Biden himself said, we will not be throwing people in jail. Stores will not be checking people for vaccine passports, which you can buy forged copies of anyway, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that whole vaccine passport thing went out the window. So some of the points that I was going to hit on here, I'll just throw them out now. If I do a video, then I do a video. If I don't, then I don't. But uh, so we started this whole thing off with Bernie Sanders saying that Biden could wind up being the most progressive president since FDR. Yeah, well, no, <laughs> clearly not. Biden's plan was he wanted to have the U.S. get to 70 percent vaccinated by the 4th of July. That's considered an estimate for herd immunity. We don't actually know what herd immunity is. It's somewhere between 70 and 90 percent to where if you get that many people immune to it, uh, it sort of ceases to circulate, stops being a problem because people's bodies are killing it rather than replicating it so much. We just don't know yet. The vaccine's been out for four months. We just, we don't know at this point. But in any case, the U.S. is at 35% vaccinated with two months to go uh, to July 4th. That doesn't look like it's going to happen. Actually, the rate of vaccinations are slowing. They kind of peaked about a month ago, and they have been in decline since that time. A lot of people who got their first shot and need the second shot haven't gotten their second shot, and at least yet. So we know that it, it seems to have some efficacy if you just get the one shot, but it's reduced over getting both shots. It might be somewhere like 70-80% protection. We also don't know yet the time frame on how long the vaccines provide protection for. It could be 10 years and it could be 10 months. We don't know because this whole thing is just unfolding on the fly. That's the nature of a novel disaster. We haven't seen it before, so we don't have data. So anyway, Biden's plan was to get to 70% by little under two months from right now, 4th of July. And really, they just gave people an incentive to not get vaccinated. Like, your life will no longer be impinged. And okay, well, vaccine, you know, people, the rate of vaccination was already slowing. What's this going to do? We'll know in a few weeks. But what does this mean? Um, everything's going back to normal. I know my state just kind of cracked down on their unemployment, uh, stringency, the standards, and they're making people revalidate things. Um, I, that can't be a coincidence. I think this is all part of a coordinated, uh, you know, effort here to basically say, here's the deal, Jack to, sorry, that was a terrible Biden impression. Here's your free vaccine. Now shut up and go back to work. That seems to be the deal, um, except what? Except most people aren't getting it, and they're basically just writing everyone off at this point as acceptable losses. Well, why? Of course, it's in the interest of getting businesses open again. One of the things I found interesting, again, this is all just off the top of my head. I wish I could show you the video. Uh, Rochelle Walensky, who is Biden's head of the CDC. She is a medical doctor and an MPH, uh, Master of Public Health, so trained in epidemiology and all that stuff. She is an infectious diseases expert. 
she was all about masks and was very critical of the Trump thing. I think not just from a, you know, blue MAGA perspective, but I think she sounded sincere to me from um, her statements on the pandemic. She just earlier this week and Fauci faced a uh, Senate hearing where they got grilled for like two and a half hours and the Republicans fucking unloaded on them, just pummeled them with like, why can't my kids go to summer camp and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So is it a coincidence that one or two days later, the CDC under her direction lifts the mask directive? I mean, if that's all it took, that plus the, you know, the we are closed thing that was trending, businesses can't hire people. Uh, they, they, they're screaming for things to go back to normal. Again, that may backfire, and I'm going to come back to that. But if that's the case, if this is all it took, then Biden is governing exactly like a Republican. He's selling us out at the first sign of pressure. And, um, you know, if that's all it took from the Republicans to get the Democrats to do what they want, Fuck. I mean, what literally what use are the Democrats then? Of course, we have been anti-Democrat from day one on this channel. This isn't hugely surprising. It's depressing, though. You don't want people selling you out no matter how predictable it is. But uh, I also think this is a classic example of something where if the Republicans were doing it, the Democrats would be screaming about it. Then the Democrats get into power and nobody is screaming about it but us. I will say, though, as I said in my last video, that every single comment I saw on Twitter from random, neutral, non-political accounts, people who were, you know, didn't have like mega patriot number 89, whatever in their handle, just random people who even had blue waves, uh, the little blue wave icon uh, emoji thing in their in their handle. They were like, Biden, uh, thanks, but like. I appreciate you getting us back to normal, but is it really time? Like I was just seeing, it was every single comment was like, yeah, this isn't safe. Also within hours up to this point, half the states had mask mandates and half don't. As of yesterday, Friday, I believe all but five states dropped their mask mandates and stores like Trader Joe's have announced they are not going to be requiring people to wear masks anymore. It's fucking open season. I think this is going to backfire. And I still have to talk about the effect on kids. So I will get to that. But um, the backfiring, what do I mean by that? Well, up to now, we had a framework where business was reduced and slowed. You know, people had to wear masks and distance. And stores, you know, had the little arrows on the floor. I don't know if your state did that, but like, you know, stores would put down the like flow of traffic arrows on the floor that like one in three people minimum didn't, you know, <laughs> heed anyway. But uh, there was a system. There was a system for people who were concerned about COVID to feel halfway safe going out. And I know it got me out of the house. I am concerned about COVID. I was very strict about not catching it. I literally dropped my guard one time back in December. I was like, I just have such bad cabin fever. I need to go out. And I did. And I'm pretty sure I got sick the very first time that I went to, you know, a place where there was a lot of people um, rather than just sticking to like very quiet places. So, yeah. Um, what happens now? You know, they're doing this to try to trick everybody into thinking it's going to go back to normal. Are we going to get a huge spike? Probably. Who's going to be affected? Well, the two out of three people who aren't vaccinated, including 100% of children under the age of 12. Think about that. <laughs> Do you have kids? Leave a comment. So basically, why I say this could backfire, you had a system before where people could feel halfway safe going out. Now, none of those protections exist anymore. So I think that's going to make people less likely to go out on the whole. Like, yes, the people who never wanted to wear a mask in the first place and think COVID is just the flu, which incidentally, some of that denial went with its hosts to the grave. I mean, there were stories coming out of when it was, I think, North Dakota or South Dakota was like the huge hotspot. There were nurses saying that they were hooking people up onto ventilators and their last words were, this can't be happening. COVID's not real. 
Like nothing ever got through to these people that it's real, it's dangerous, etc. Now, children have been shown in some studies to be about 40% less likely to contract COVID when exposed to basically the same you know, amount of COVID that an adult is. But that's only 40%. It's not 100%. It's not 99%. It's not even 80%. It's 40%. So it's harder for kids to catch it, but it's by no means impossible. In fact, who is the demographic whose share of COVID is rising the most right now? Kids. They're up to about, I believe, 20% of the overall COVID burden is kids. That's the demographic that is newly catching COVID the most. Why? Because schools are back in. And now they're going to try to do this whole thing without masks. I think we're going to see a spike, and I think it's going to hurt business badly, and I don't know what it's going to take for them to turn around on this once they've committed, because it seems to me the ruling class is ready to throw in the towel and just say, free vaccine, that's the deal, but we got to go 100% back to normal. And it just doesn't fucking work that way. It doesn't. This whole idea of saying, honor system, if you've been vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. That doesn't mean anything. As I said before, what would have made a lot more sense is say, hey, our target's 70%. If we think that if we get 70% of everyone vaccinated, the thing will naturally take care of itself. So if we get to 70%, nobody has to wear a mask anymore. Hey, now you've got people pitching in for a collective effort, not people just riding on everybody else's coattails. Because if you don't get to 70, you know, the whole class doesn't get the pizza party kind of thing, right? So that would have made sense. Um, incidentally, I was digging through the EU's CDC. It has virtually the same name. I think it is the CDC of the EU. Um, their vaccination rate is slower, but they were talking in the same language in terms of offering benefits, this individual benefit. If you individually get vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. But it's just absurd. All this is going to do is result in more chaos, confusion, pandemonium, People are, are already mistrustful of the, the health authorities. Uh, this will only make it worse. And in the absence of the left being able to step up to fill that, which incidentally, I encourage everyone listening, whatever social media you're on, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, if you see people posting reasoned, grounded concerns about, hey, I think it's too soon to lift the mask thing, boost it, retweet it, like it. Just give a simple, supportive comment like, yeah, I share your concerns, etc. Uh, do that. You know, don't you don't have to get super political, but if you have, you know, something in your name that indicates socialism or whatever, this is a time to let the masses know, you know, non-political people, that we are concerned about worker safety. We're out there to do it. And, you know, suggest that both major parties are just not out to protect people. They're out to protect business. So, like I said, you know, people are always like, oh, we got to work with the right wing. Well, here's a great opportunity to work with just apolitical, average working people who maybe, you know, are somewhat socially conscious. This is a great time to get out there and let people know we share their concerns. We on the far left share their concerns and we doubt that the capitalist government is ever going to be able to take care of people properly and just look how bad they're fucking it up, etc. It's a great time to do that and, you know, kind of build some of that trust and let people know that, you know, when it comes to public health, socialism is greater than capitalism. So what else can we say? Um, I think that about summarizes everything. We had, you know, the plan for 70% by 4th of July and a vaccine passport. I don't see either of those things coming together. I think what we're going to get is, uh, you know, out of this plan to just help businesses short term, I think there's a decent chance what we're going to get is a big COVID spike, including kids who are 100% unvaccinated. Vaccines have not been approved so far for kids under the age of 12. Um, that could wind up hurting business because people are just going to stay home rather than going out in public. We will see. 
Um, and I think that also under, under the acceptable loss category, which is an important point, it's very likely that they're just going to say, you know, basically turn a blind eye to further outbreaks saying, oh, well, you know, if the vaccine didn't help you. Tough shit, basically. Um, what really would help is continuing to be careful with masks and social distancing. If you can organize demonstrations in your area for that, I think that would be another way to let people know, you know, not just online in the box, but get out in the real world and say, you know, socialists for public health, socialists for COVID-19 protection. We demand mask mandates, etc. Get out there and do that. You know, let people know that um, the corporate Democratic Party is never going to listen to you and that we need to build actual alternatives for working people. All right, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for listening. Thanks to the current patrons whose names are on the screen. If you'd like to get your name on the screen, you can sign up for as little as $2 a month at patreon.com slash socialism for all. Also, liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting, all of those help to boost the channel and the videos. We appreciate all of your contributions. This channel is growing rapidly. We will probably be up to 3,000 subs by the end of the month. We're looking at five to six over the summer and maybe eight to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year if these rates stay as high as they are or higher. So that's great. Uh, we want to get this message out and expand this conversation to a wide audience because capitalism is falling apart and I, for one, don't want to go down with it. Thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you in the next video.